Hi, I'm Quantic Dev, a senior software engineer with 10 years of experience, and this is your guide to software patterns, principles, and best practices. Today, I'm going to give you an exhaustive list of software patterns and principles, and I will top it up with best practices based on my own personal experiences. First off, understanding software design patterns and principles is a must-have for any software engineer of any seniority. Other engineering disciplines that deal with software on a daily basis will also greatly benefit from this video. System and electronics engineers that do microcontroller programming all day, I'm looking at you. Besides, any software engineering job interview will have questions on these software patterns and practices. Let's start with the basics. 1. Yagni. You ain't gonna need it. The absolute first thing to do before taking any action is to think, do you really need to do what you intend to do? Can you not do it? Are you wasting your time building something that you don't need? Ask these questions. Now, after questioning your existence and the problem in hand, say you still need it. Can you solve it in another, a simpler way? Can you reuse pre-existing work from inside your code base or maybe external libs? Don't reinvent the wheel. You ain't gonna need it. I've developed many widely used open source projects, apps and games. I've also developed and deployed large-scale systems. During all of that, one principle that I break the most has got to be Yagni. I start implementing something thinking that I will need it. Later on, my mind changes or the design changes and my work just goes to waste. Sometimes I jump the gun really quickly because I get really excited about the challenge ahead, but I should be more considered. Now check this next point. 2. Think before coding. This is the principle of all principles, the pattern of all patterns. Uninterrupted thinking on a problem is hard, but it is essential. Take a walk if you need to, to clear yourself of distractions, and focus on the problem in hand and possible solutions. Come up with a comprehensive design before proceeding with the implementation. After that, Google around for existing solutions. Then Google harder to find a more optimized solution. Then finally Google more for comparison of those solutions and decide on the best one. Then write pseudocode. It helps you think better and it is easier to share with your colleagues or online, say for instance on Reddit, Stack Overflow, etc. to ask for more opinions. Now, if there is one situation that you can act before thinking, it is now. Hit that subscribe button. You will get the best engineering and development advice for the rest of your life. 3. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Favor simplicity in your design and code. If you can't explain it simply enough, you don't understand it good enough. The benefit of introducing a design pattern should outweigh the complexity that it adds. Do not insert code patterns just for the sake of it. Only start introducing patterns when they make things cleaner and more comprehensible. Read, then reread your code to see if you can simplify it a little bit at every pass. Remember, good books are not written, they are rewritten. Go over your code over and over again until it is simple and concise enough. Sometimes I personally find myself simplifying an entire paragraph of code into one or two lines, which adds massive readability. 4. Dry. Do not repeat yourself. Reuse as much code as possible. To do this, you need to modularize your code. Break large chunks of code into smaller and reusable functions. Group relevant functions into classes and files. Group relevant classes in namespaces. And publish all these relevant code in the form of libraries, internal or open source. Use other people's code where you can. Google around for open source or licensable libraries. So don't forget what Ralph Johnson said. Before a software can be reusable, it must be usable. 5. Single Responsibility Principle Any function you write should have one responsibility at a time. For instance, a function named showDate, which prints out the current date. Any class you write should also have a singular purpose. For instance, a date packer class, which encapsulates methods necessary to help the user pick a date. It might have functions for displaying the selected date, selected date range, etc. Same goes for libraries and modules. 
they should have responsibility over a single part of the functionality provided by the entire software. When you start having time and time zone related functions in your day time picker, well, that's a pretty good signal that you should start refactoring those into a time picker instead. 6. Separation of concerns. Similar in spirit to single responsibility principle, but on a broader spectrum. It is the principle of sectioning your program into separate parts so that each part addresses a different concern. Every program has multiple concerns. For instance, getting data from the server, validating that data, and displaying that data to the user. If you section your app so that you have three layers, one for client-server communication, one for data validation, and one for rendering a user interface, you achieve separation of concerns in that app. Simple as that. You should take extra care not to leak UI-related code into your controller, model, and validation layers. Also, be careful not to leak controller logic into your communication code. Using well-crafted libraries like React for the UI or gRPC for client-server communication can help you enforce these separations pretty clearly. 7. Composition or inheritance Say you are designing a class and you need a certain functionality. That functionality is provided by a method of another class. Create an instance of that class and access that method. When you need another functionality from another class, create an instance of it and use it too, and keep references to those instances during the lifetime of your class. This is called composition. As an alternative, you can inherit from any class that you need functionality from, and that is inheritance. However, in many languages, you can only have one base class at a time. When overused, inheritance leads to inherent complexity. You might even end up questioning the overall usefulness of object-oriented programming. Digging into base classes require an intelligent IDE, Integrated Development Environment. On the other hand, when a class is constructed with a simple composition, you can follow the control flow easily in a simple text editor. As a bonus, if you favor composition over inheritance, you can start utilizing dependency injection pattern, which is up next. If you like the video and want more similar content, give it a thumbs up so I will know. If I missed a pattern or practice that you like and want to mention, leave a comment down below so I can discuss those in a consecutive video. 8. Dependency Injection When one object supplies the dependencies of another object, it is doing simple dependency injection, which is also referred to as the inversion of control. Basically, instead of all objects managing their own dependencies, they let objects higher in the hierarchy to manage the dependencies for them. These dependencies could be classes, services, etc. In functional programming terms, do not instantiate objects randomly in your functions. Accept them as arguments to your methods. In object-oriented programming terms, instead of creating instances of external objects in your classes, constructor method, accept them as arguments to your constructor. This achieves several things. First, you will not have to deal with the initialization details of all the other objects that you depend on. Whatever is initializing your class through your constructor will have to satisfy all the required dependencies. Second, this ensures that the concern of initiating objects is separated from the users of them. And finally, it enables test-driven development, which is the next point. There are great dependency injection libraries for practically any programming language. However, I don't recommend using them right away. Instead, list your dependencies on your constructors and see if that is sufficient. You're going to see 99% of the time that's going to be sufficient. 9. Test-driven development TDD is the simple principle of writing tests before you write code. After you gather your requirements and designing what you want to do, you can start writing some very high-level test code to assert those requirements and design decisions. Step-by-step -step example. Say you want to create a calculator program. You start by capturing requirements. Your program can add or subtract. Before coding any part of your app, you create the following tests. Can add and can subtract. Now code your app just enough to make those tests pass. 
After you create high-level tests and code your app accordingly, you can create more refined tests for lower levels of your app as you code along. You can add tests for exceptional conditions, handling unexpected input, etc. As you find bugs, you write regression tests to reproduce them first, then write the code to fix them and make them pass again. In test-driven development, tests are a first-class citizen. Your design changes along with your tests. Your code changes along with your tests. Your code lives and dies by its sword. I mean, tests. Second tip. I have another video on software quality assurance that goes in depth on manual and automated testing. If you want to check it out, link is in the description below. 10. One-way communication and data flow. Whenever possible, make sure that the components of your app communicate with each other in a one-way style of communication. Even better, use the top-to-bottom style of communication. When communication and the data flow from top to bottom in your apps, it is easier to debug because you know where the data starts and where it ends. When each component chat with each other in a two-way manner, you lose the ability to debug easily since you can no longer follow the data properly. You can utilize events, communication buses, and publish subscribe pattern to ensure orderly communication between components and layers of your program. For instance, model, view, controller pattern is a good user interface data flow pattern. Controller produces some data, it gets encapsulated by the model objects, and the view components render those data models in a nice UI. All the while, the data flows one way. When the user clicks a button, it raises an event, the controller handles that event, and the data flow starts all over again. Do not start a project by importing a communication bus library. Instead, edit when you need it. These patterns are important, but keeping it simple is important I know it's not a word, but it's a word in my dictionary. 11. Immutability Immutable objects cannot be modified once they are created. This means if you have an object encapsulating the contact details of a person, you cannot modify them after the object is initialized. So what do you do if you want to update the contact details? You initialize a new object and copy of the details along with the updated fields. Now, this sounds inefficient, but once you have hundreds of objects that can mutate at any time, tracking the state of all the objects in your app becomes impossible. Instead, mark every field in every object immutable and create new instances of them when you need to change a field's value. You can easily compare old and the new objects to see what has changed. Also, when you have the old and updated objects separately in your hand, it is easy to calculate the diff and send it over the network when you need to. There are great immutability helper libraries to help you understand this pattern better and apply it to your projects. Immutability will also help you better utilize state container pattern, which is up next. Immutability is quite important for apps that encapsulate all of state or do client-server communications. It becomes especially important when your application grows and tracking the local, local state of each and every class becomes a nightmare. A lot of frameworks like React have built-in ways to deal with this. Read and follow their guides. 12. State containers. Instead of having your application state scattered throughout your app, you can instead collect all of it in a single state container object. This will enable you to look into a single parent object and observe the entire state of your app. Coupled with immutable state objects, you can easily save and restore the entire state of your app, or even roll it back in case of exceptional situations. Again, there are great state container libs and frameworks. They also come bundled with pretty good documentations and guides, so check them out before using them. 13. Factory and Singleton Pattern Once your objects and their constructors become sufficiently complex, creating instances of them will be a pain. You will have to know which dependencies they need every time you need to initialize them. After the constructor changes, you will have to change it everywhere. Instead, you can utilize the factory pattern and let the factory object construct any class you need. So you will have a single object handling the dependencies for class instances you need. If you need only a single instance of an object to exist during the entire lifetime of your program, you can use singleton pattern instead. Basically, you create a static class, 
with a static member with a read only field that encapsulates the object instance you need. After that, you can access the object from anywhere in your app without having to create an instance of it. Remember, this makes testing harder. Each programming language and each application type, server side or client side, will have its own patterns. So check out the link in the description below for a very extensive list of patterns per programming language list. If you are new to programming, don't stress out over the patterns too much. Go over this video once a year and you will internalize more of the message every time you listen to it. Don't forget, code is poetry. It is beautiful and it is well crafted. This video helps you craft beautiful software, I mean poetry, I mean software. Now go ahead and exercise these principles. Make an app that writes good poetry for you. Also subscribe to this channel now or unplug this computer.